Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is Friday Favorites. These are my Fancy Fools and Flounders of the Week. Um, I don't have a ton of stuff this week. I feel like last week I had just a crap ton of products. And this week is definitely smaller, but I think that the products that I do have are really awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. So for foundation this week, I have been loving my Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. And I have mine in the shade... 0.5. This is the lightest shade and this matches me absolutely perfect. This is a great lightweight kind of sheer to medium coverage foundation that makes it feel like you're not wearing any foundation at all. That's what I absolutely love about this foundation is that you put it on and you can build it up like I said to medium coverage but when you look at your skin and when you touch your skin it doesn't feel like you have foundation on and it just looks like skin. So this is just a great option. My favorite way to apply this is with my beauty blender. So I'll put about one and a half pumps onto a little palette and then use my beauty blender to apply it. And then if there's any kind of redness like on my cheeks or anything like that, I'll go in with maybe another quarter of a pump and reapply to those areas that I feel like need a little bit more coverage. And this pump is great because you can actually control how much product comes out versus like kind of like the um, MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, you're almost forced to use a whole pump because you can't, the pump is so stiff, nah, stiff, um, the pump is so stiff that you can't control how much product comes out. So that's what's really great about this foundation. If you guys are on the market for a new foundation that gives you natural coverage and a natural finish, I would highly suggest picking up Urban K's Naked Skin. For eyes this week, I have really been enjoying my two newest Tarte palettes. The first one came in their Bon Voyage um, little holiday set, and this is what the packaging looks like. It's super cute and pretty. And then on the inside, it has 20 full-size Amazonian clay shadows that look like that. Now these are really great, just natural colors or neutral colors, I guess I should say. They do have, they did include a couple like color colors, if that makes any sense. You have this really pretty kind of like teal jade green and then this really dark indigo color that's super pretty. Um, but for the most part, these are very neutral, very wearable. You can create a nice natural look or you can use some of the darker colors up here and over here to create a more smoky, dramatic look. I love Tarte Shadows because they blend so easily and I feel like if you're just starting out with eyeshadows and you're having a hard time creating a seamless blend, that these are just a great option. So. If you can still find this, I don't know if it's still available because it was part of the holiday kind of collection from Tarte, I would suggest picking this one up. Now a palette that isn't supposed to be limited edition and is very new is the Tarte Lit palette. It looks like this. Now I will say when I got this, I thought it was going to be a lot bigger than it was, but if you can see it like in comparison to my hand, it's not much bigger than my hand, so don't be surprised when you get it or if you pick it up that it's quite small, but that doesn't mean that the inside isn't amazing. So this palette has, let's see, 12 all matte shadows, and it's very reflective, so sorry if I'm blinding you guys. Um, and they range anywhere from warm colors, cool colors, and then they kind of included like a mauve purple row. So up top here you have the warm colors, in the middle you have like those mauves and purples, and then on the bottom you have the more cooler tones. So this is a great palette on its own, but it's also a perfect kind of companion palette to those other eyeshadows that are really shimmery, or those palettes that you have that don't have a good blending color, or a really nice dark black that you can use as a liner or to smoke out the outer V. This one is just perfect for that, and it's a great formula. Just like the um, Bon Voyage colors, they blend beautifully. They aren't chalky, um, and they're not super powdery. So these have been my go-to palettes. I've used them both individually as well as together. For a bronzer, contour, and highlight this week, I kept it really simple. I used my It Cosmetics My Sculpted Face palette, and this is just a perfect all-in-one kind of little palette. You can use this as eyeshadows, you can use this as bronzer, contour, highlight, blush. It just really does everything. The colors that I've mostly been drawn to are these two right here in the middle. I'm sure you can kind of see all the powder everywhere. 
I use these, um, I mix them together for a bronzer, and then I typically go in with this lighter shade as my contour. With a dense brush, this creates the most beautiful, most natural looking contour that you could ever achieve. So I've loved using those. And then for highlight, I have used this one right up here. This is kind of a white gold, um, slightly pink color, and it is intense. So let me show you. I don't know if you guys can see that. I think you can. Um, but it is crazy, crazy pigmented. So if you're going to pick this up, be extremely careful when going in with this color especially. And then a couple days this week, I did use this matte white powder just to kind of highlight the center of my face. And I really like how it looked. It wasn't too white. It was kind of like a sheer white. So it looked natural and it just gave me a really pretty brightening effect throughout the center of my face. For blush this week, I pulled out my MAC Mineralized Blush in Love Thing. Now I haven't used this one in a while and I'm not sure why because it's gorgeous. I love the formula of the mineralized blushes because they do have a little bit of a sheen and you can get away with using no highlighter, um, but they're not overly shimmery, overly shimmery. They aren't overly shimmery, so they're not going to accentuate like fine lines or pores or any kind of texture issues you may have on your cheeks. Um, but they're just the perfect amount of shimmer. This one is kind of like a mauve rose color with some gold shimmer throughout it. Let me see. So there it is right there. It is just perfect. I feel like this is a great kind of winter fall color, um, but I, I'm sure it looks gorgeous in the summer and springtime as well. So that has been my blush. I think I wore this maybe five days this week, which is pretty big for a blush. I mean, because I have so many, so I kind of switch them periodically. And um, to use one five days in a row is pretty big. So definitely look at Love Thing the next time you're at your MAC counter or in a MAC store because it's beautiful. For mascara, I went back to my Holy Grail. I mean, nothing beats this mascara in my opinion. I have been using my It Cosmetics and my Tarte. Uh, mascara for quite a while now and I was just ready for something different. I went ahead and picked up my favorite mascara of all time and it is the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. Love, love this mascara. I have used this mascara for probably two, two or three years and this by far, I've probably gone through, I'm not kidding, 25 tubes of this stuff. It is awesome. It is cheap. It has a, let me see if I can show you guys. It has kind of a scooped wand, which is really good for getting into the base of the lashes, but it's small enough that you can definitely use this on your lower lashes and not feel like you're getting mascara everywhere. The formula doesn't clump as the name suggests, but it doesn't flake off, it doesn't get goopy. Um, it is perfect the first time you use it. I feel like with a lot of mascaras, it's like the first time you use it, it's okay. And then if you wait about a week and a half to two weeks to let the formula dry out, it's like the perfect consistency. This is the perfect consistency the very first time you use it. So I really appreciate that from this mascara. And I just think this is amazing. And I love the fact that it is very inexpensive and you can find it easily at any drugstore. For lips this week, I reached for my Revlon Lip Butter in the shade 47 pink lemonade. You guys don't want to see this. You want to see this. So number 47 pink lemonade. I do believe this was limited edition. There really isn't anything special about this particular color. It's just a very light pink. It almost doesn't show up necessarily. It gives my lips just the tiniest amount of color, but it's more the formula that I was wanting. Yeah, you guys can barely see it. It is so light. Um, but the formula is very moisturizing, very smooth on your lips. And because I live in a drier climate, and especially with the winters, I mean, we've had like ice storms going on here. Um, my lips have just been so dry. So at work, I will just put this in my pocket and reapply this. And I feel like it's actually helping the condition of my lips as well as giving them just a tiny bit of color and a tiny bit of shine. So if you guys haven't already, which I'm sure everybody in the world has, um, try out some of the Revlon lip butters. They have 
a ton of different colors. My other favorite color in this formula is the creme brulee. That is like a true kind of beigey nude. That one is beautiful, especially in the summer. Um, but I have been liking this pink lemonade color. My last favorite is from L'Oreal and it is the new Infallible Pro Spray and Set. This is a setting spray and I didn't think I liked this at first, but the more I used it, the more I kind of tailored my application of it and I liked it even more. This says to shake well, hold eight to 10 inches away, close eyes and spray four to six times in an X or a T motion. So you would go down the face, across the face and then diagonally. I think that is way too much spray and I feel like eight to 10 inches is still too close. So I haven't used this today, so I'm gonna show you quickly how I use it. I shake it up and then I kind of hold it, let's see. I hold it probably a good like 18 inches away and I have the nozzle aiming upward. That way it'll fall onto my face instead of spraying directly on my face because I feel like when you spray it directly at your face, the um, spray isn't fine enough. So if you spray it up in the air, it kind of thins out the mist and is a really fine spray. So this is how I do it. And I do probably three or four sprays. And then I just let the product kind of fall onto my face. And I do feel like it does increase the longevity of the products that you're wearing. And it's also a lot less expensive than the Urban Decay setting sprays. It does have less product. I believe it has like, I don't know, half the product. I feel like the Urban Decay one is huge. I feel like it's like six ounces and this is 3.4. But um, if you are in the market for a new setting spray that does work and feels nice on the skin, I would definitely pick this one up. However, try out like spraying it up and then letting it fall onto your face as opposed to spraying it directly onto your face. I feel like you get a better application and it keeps your makeup looking the way it was before you applied a wet spray onto it. So let's get into my flounder. This is the Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. This is a very thick, very creamy concealer that definitely has to be warmed up between your fingertips before you apply or else you're gonna apply way too much and you won't be able to spread it. I, this doesn't crease, it does what it says, it doesn't crease. I feel like the problem lies in about two to three hours after I've put this on, I almost feel like the coverage fades away. It doesn't crease and it doesn't like run over my face or anything like that. I do use a light setting powder to set this down, um, but I just feel like the coverage goes away. I don't know where it goes, but I feel like it just is gone within two or three hours. So I would say if you guys want a full coverage concealer that doesn't need to last, very long, then go for this. But if you are like me who wakes up at five o'clock in the morning, does her makeup at 530, and then doesn't get home until seven o'clock at night sometimes, you want your eyes to look, you know, bright, and you want that concealer to hold up and the coverage to hold up. So I don't think that this is the greatest for that. I don't hate it and I won't throw it away, but this will definitely be a concealer that I reach for if I'm just going out to dinner or going to a quick lunch and I don't need the coverage to last, that's what I'll use this for. It won't be like for work days or long, I mean, anything that has to last more than a couple hours. So, okay guys, so that is it for my Friday favorites, Fancy Fools and Flounders for the week. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what your guys' favorite beauty products were this week. And sorry, there wasn't a ton of products, but I do feel like what I showed you was really good kind of quality stuff. And I hope maybe I sparked your interest in some products and you'll check some of these things out. So anyways, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you in the next video. Bye.